Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I want to recommend you some books that are set outside of the United States. So let's start with the Caribbean first. So the first book that I want to recommend to you, which is set in the Dominican Republic as well as New York City, is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This story follows two sisters. Camino lives in the Dominican Republic where her father visits her every single summer, while Yahaira lives in New York City where her father leaves her every single summer to go to the Dominican Republic. And one year when their father is going to the Dominican Republic, his plane crashes and there are no survivors left. So this story is about these two sisters finding out that they are related and their father had somewhat of a secret life behind closed doors that they did not know about. It deals a lot with grief, it deals a lot with sisterhood and family, and it also directly highlights the deferring lives that these two sisters have, one living in the Dominican Republic and one living in America. It is a wonderful book told in verse that is just so beautifully written, and Elizabeth Acevedo can always just paint a scene so beautifully, so if you want to read a book set in the Dominican Republic, I would highly recommend in this one. The next book set in the Caribbean that I want to recommend to you is The Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. It would not be a video by me if I'm not recommending this book to you. This book is very interesting because it follows two different timelines. One timeline is in 1950s Cuba and the second timeline is Cuba in the present day. So it follows these two women who are related to one another. One is a grandmother and one is the granddaughter and it follows their two different lives as they are in Cuba, as they they are reacting to the different political climates of Cuba, one in the 1950s and one in the present day. This is my favorite book of all time because I am Cuban and I felt very connected to the story in terms of the character who lives in present day who is visiting Cuba for the first time, contrasted with her grandmother who lived in Cuba during the revolution. It is so beautifully written and just so atmospheric and it really takes you to Cuba in the past and the present and it is such a wonderful book. If you're looking for a Latin book to read, I cannot recommend this enough because it really talks about what it means to be Cuban and what it means to be Cuban-American as well and the differing factors that come along with those identities. And I just... I cannot recommend this book enough. Now let's move on to Europe. One book that takes place in England that I highly recommend is Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a rom-com about a woman who decides to fake date her friend at the university that she works at after a video of them goes viral and people online start shipping them together. It is just such a heartwarming book. It is so wonderfully written. The chemistry between these two main characters are off the charts and this is actually one of my favorite reads of 2020. I absolutely adored it and I cannot recommend it enough. If you're looking to dive into romance books, I would highly recommend this book and if you're just looking for a nice romance to read, if you are a big romance reader, you have to pick up this book as well as Get a Life Chloe Brown, which is the first novel in this companion series. Then we have another book set in England and it is Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. This is such a wonderful character-driven novel that talks about some really serious topics like mental illness, dependency on others, and just some destructive behaviors that people get into to when their life drastically changes. So this follows our main character Queenie after a breakup with her boyfriend that she thought she would end up marrying and Queenie's world kind of falls apart and she has to pick up the pieces without her boyfriend by her side. So she gets into some very self-destructive behaviors and she deals a lot with mental illness and friendships and her job. It is such a wonderful yet dark novel. I would highly recommend the audiobook because the audiobook is just so wonderfully crafted. The narrator of Queenie just does such a wonderful job of bringing the story to life and it makes it so much more relatable and it just is such a wonderful audiobook. The next book that I have to recommend is also one of my favorite books of all time and it is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. This is set in Spain. It's kind of like a historical fiction fantastical story about a boy whose father shows him the cemetery of forgotten 
books. This is kind of like a secret library where whenever someone goes to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, they are allowed to pick out one book which they will protect with their entire life. So our main character Daniel decides to pick up The Shadow of the Wind and he reads this novel and he falls absolutely in love with it and he's like, I have to read more books by this author. But he starts to find out that all of these authors' books are being destroyed and that starts the story of The Shadow of the Wind. This is such an atmospheric book. It's so beautifully written. It will transport you into Spain and make you feel like you're in the story. It is so wonderfully written. Carlos Ori Zafon's writing is something that is uncomparable to another author. His writing style is just absolutely gorgeous. And if you're looking for like an autumnal type of story that will just make you fall head, head over heels for a author's writing, you have to pick up The Shadow of the Wind. I cannot recommend it enough. I need more people to read it. Then we are moving on to France and this book is set during World War II and it is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a very interesting novel somewhat similar to Clap When You Land where it follows two sisters who live in very different settings. So one sister lives in the countryside of France during World War II and one lives in the city side of France during, during World War II. The one who lives in the city is getting up into some rebellious actions where she's trying to fight against the Nazis who are invading France, while the one who lives in the countryside is just trying to survive while her little town is occupied by German soldiers. This is a very heartbreaking, very beautifully written novel as well. It's a historical fiction that I feel like everyone needs to read if you are a fan of historical fiction and it will really impact you. And it's a very interesting book while it contrasts both sides of France in terms of the countryside and the city side. And it shows how different those two settings are during the same time period. Now we are going to move on to Africa and I'm going to recommend one of my favorite historical fictions of all time and it is Homegoing by Ya Jassi. This is a novel set in Ghana and it is also split up into two different timelines. I feel like I'm a really big fan of that. So this follows two sisters. Efia is living in Ghana and Essie is imprisoned and forcefully brought to America as a slave. So this is a novel that takes place over 300 years. It's a generational family story. So it starts off with Ephia and Essie, but then it follows their descendants as history continues and their descendants are born and it follows multiple different timelines through this family's history. This novel is just so heartbreaking and just beautifully written in the way that it follows all these different family members throughout history and it starkly contrasts Afia's life and Essie's life as they are split apart and living on the different sides of the world. If you are looking for a historical fiction set in Africa as well as America, I would highly recommend Homegoing. The next book I have to recommend is set in Tokyo, Japan and it is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikatsu Kawaguchi. This is a fantastical story set in a coffee shop where if the attendants of the coffee shop sit in a very specific spot and they pour a cup of coffee, they are able to time travel to any time, future or past. It follows four different customers who use this special time travel aspect of the coffee shop in order to reconnect or reconcile with people from their past or their future. It is such a wonderful, very quiet drama. In terms of the fact that this time travel is not explosive, it is not not life-changing. It is just a simple story about a cafe where people are able to time travel. I had a lot of fun with this story. It's a very slow moving story. It's like you're drinking a cup of coffee and you're savoring it and I had a lot of fun with it. I loved reading about these four different customers who use this magical element to time travel and I really enjoyed the subtle messages that are woven into these stories. I cannot recommend it enough. I really enjoyed this story and it is such an adorable, wonderful novel. The next story I have to recommend I listened to on audiobook and it was such a delight and it is The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arigawa. This is a story about a man who is traveling across Japan to connect with people from his past because he has to get rid of his cat Nana. So it follows the perspective of the cat Nana. We don't get to see his owner's point of view but we see the cat's 
point of view and that's what makes this story so special because you get the perspective of a cat you get these really cute thoughts from a cat's perspective in terms of loving their owner rubbing against their owner's legs sitting on top of a tv because it's warm and cats love warmth it is such a cute story because i don't think i've ever read a story from the perspective of a cat and i think that's completely unique and cute and while it is a cute story it's also a very serious story because while nana is traveling with their owner saturo nana is also witnessing saturo's past in terms of the people that he has met throughout his life who have made a big impact on him and nana is kind of confused as to why saturo wants to get rid of nana and while it is a cute story it does have some very heavy themes there it's a perfect balance of cuteness while also having some very serious aspects to the story i highly recommend that you listen to the audiobook because the narrator is so talented in bringing Nana's character and their narration to life because I feel like the narrator's style in delivering the story just makes the story that much more enjoyable. Next I have a story set in Hong Kong and it is Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu. This is a Roman holiday retelling following a k-pop star named Lucky. So Lucky decides to leave her hotel and leave her k-pop idol lifestyle behind for one night and she bumps into a boy named Jack and Jack is secretly a paparazzi and he bumps into Lucky and he's like she is a k-pop idol if i were to get photos of lucky and be able to print it i would get paid so much i would have my career skyrocket as a paparazzi if you aren't familiar with the movie roman holiday which i highly recommend that you see roman holiday is about these two people who meet up together and one is very famous and one is part of the newspaper or the paparazzi and they decide to kind of spend a day together and forget their responsibilities and forget that their lives are so vastly different and they decide to explore Rome together. So that's the same premise as Somewhere Only We Know. So Lucky and Jack decide to just spend the day in Hong Kong trying food, shopping, going to different places that they normally wouldn't go together. It is such a great YA. I really enjoy Maureen Gu's writing. I always recommend her writing to others because she writes such authentic characters. This isn't just sunshine and rainbows because this also talks about how toxic and how suffocating k-pop culture is if you are a k-pop idol it talks a lot about lucky's anxiety and her issues that she's dealing with as a famous person and it also deals with jack trying to make a name for himself because his family doesn't really believe in his career so this is a why that i highly recommend everyone read if you are into k-pop if you love the movie roman holiday i feel like this will be right up your alley any last book that i have to recommend is mostly set in singapore and it is crazy rich asians if you have not read the book or if you have not seen the movie, what are you doing? This is such a great story with such a big cast and it is mostly set in Singapore where an upcoming wedding is about to occur and everyone is getting ready for it, everyone's meeting and this follows Rachel whose boyfriend invites her to this wedding in Singapore and she finds out that her boyfriend Nicholas is actually part of the richest family in Singapore so her life is kind of turned upside down and she has to deal with his very judgmental family while also just standing up for herself and kind of being introduced into this really luxurious and opulent world that is this family's life in Singapore. This will just absolutely transport you to Singapore. It made me feel like I was there with these characters because it is so richly described. The characters are just also original and quirky and if you want to feel like you are transported to Singapore, I would highly recommend reading the book and then watching the movie because the visuals are just absolutely stunning. And I read this on audiobook and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the narrator because it felt like I was watching the movie in my mind again and I had so much fun with Crazy Rich Asians. So those are some books that are set outside of the United States that I would highly recommend that you read 
read. There are always going to be new stories I'm going to be reading outside of the United States, but these are just some stories that I wanted to recommend to you all. So if you have any recommendations for books set outside of the United States, please recommend them down below because I would love to add them to my TBR. And if you enjoyed this video and you want me to make a part two, let me know down below because I am always going to be reading more books set outside of America, so I'm always going to have new books to recommend to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at stories for coffee if you want to see some more bookish photos that I take and I hope you have a wonderful day. So I'll see you later. Bye!